welcome to Art Chat with Julie Barrow. Here I have on my on my right, I have Bastian Lecouf de Haan, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. Yes. And then on my left, I have Samuel Araya. Both of them are part of three artists. We are missing Marcella Bolivar. Uh, part of the Three Imposters show, which is running from October 11th to November 7th. And I know that Something's going to show up below me here that will say the actual date it ends, but I believe it ends on the 7th of 2015. Uh, we, were in, we were given the joy of having both Bastion and Sam fly all the way out to Seattle to attend the opening with us and meet their fans and friends and their Crab Jab family. Uh, once again, we've actually met uh, both, of, both, yeah. both, all three of us met in um, Kansas City. Yeah. earlier this year and that was actually kind of an interesting experience because I was really nervous you guys would not get along and you guys we don't really do it. yeah we don't yeah. Well, we just pretend yeah you guys did a great job fooling me so yeah I, I appreciate it because I was really sweating bullets on that yeah well but we are the, the three imposters yeah they, they're great liars yeah so, everything is fake tell me a little bit about uh, your background in terms of what kind of work you do um, so my background background uh, comes from uh, I came really late to digital illustration I'm, I, I think and I think that's the same for you Sam mm -hmm. uh, that we are the generation who uh, saw the, the computer and the digital work uh, turning into something that is actually interesting to use um, to create artwork uh, so my, my background is um, drawing uh, characters for my brothers, uh, my brother Dungeon and Dragon, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, drawing, drawing his characters, making all these drawings, because then I have, a, I have a Master of Fine Art, but I did not really uh, learn anything there. This Master is, uh, it was for me some time to uh, practice as much as I could uh, live drawing and spend uh, it was like five years of wasting time. Nice <laughs> wasting time practicing, having like student jobs on the side. And, uh, so that is, that is my, my study background, but uh, then it's only just practice and discovering digital you're doing, techniques. You're doing a lot of book covers now mm -hmm. at this point. I know you're doing some games you've done, uh, did a few uh, Magic the Gathering cards, mm -hmm. uh, which just released actually this year. Yeah, I think the everything, first uh, yeah everything is coming out now. Yes, so. and uh, many uh, covers, the ones that I know of, you can throw them out here because some of them I'm going to forget, but you know, we did, you did the Spectrum cover. Yeah, the, for the, the one that is coming out mm -hmm. uh, right now actually, in October, yeah. I think. And, uh, and I think there was one other cover that you just did recently. I don't know, I, I, I actually... <laughs> I'm lying. <laughs> I, I do covers all the time. Yes, that's, you do. That's my main job, I, I do book covers, so... Um, so I do not... Do so he's doing them all the time. I'm, not, a, I'm not keeping track. Yes, of, he doesn't want to do a CV, a, a, a bio of all the things that he does, but he does quite a bit of uh, work in publication, mm -hmm. a lot of books, Well, that, games. That's, that's what... Uh, what I wanted to do, it's, uh, I became an illustrator because I love to tell stories. So I also wrote my own graphic novel back oh, nice. in France. Uh, I write stories, sometimes uh, sometime with words, uh, most of the time with pictures. Yeah. Thank you. And then we also have Sam here, who mm -hmm. has a similar background in many ways. Um, well, why don't you talk a little bit about the work that you do? Well, I was um, an illustrator mostly um, working for the gaming industry, you know, board games, card games, I even did some concept art for a couple of video game pitches, pitches for Hollywood as well, but I kind of found my true calling on like three, four years ago when I was doing work for the first solo show here in Crab Jab, mm -hmm. which was focusing on illustration, especially in uh, the field that Bastian is right now, who covers because I also love books. I'm not so fond of the, the whole, um, you know, storytelling that's going on in illustration, like purely storytelling. I believe that 
we can do something more akin to what's going on in fine art. Um, my teacher, Sterling Conley, used to say that um, illustration answers a question and fine art makes a question. So my aim is like, you know, bridging that gap with something completely new, hopefully. And I studied at the art department that was an online school. Right, right. Yeah, with some of my big heroes from the illustration world. I was so lucky to do that. As you both know, uh, not a lot of people know about th this, but the show's actually, the theme of the show is actually based on an Arthur Machen book that was written in the 1800s uh, about three people, two men and a woman, who uh, are the main characters, but there's little novels inside of this novel, and each one tells a little story. A story that one of the three characters tells other characters in the story, uh, and of course, these are fantastical stories, uh, very hor in many ways very horrific uh, and uh, amazing. I know that H.P. Uh, Lovecraft was a huge fan of Arthur mm -hmm. Machen, and that's where he came up with his Cthulhu uh, vision was through this book, which that's why I push it so hard. It's an amazing book. Would you all three, I know Marcel is not here, but uh, ever be interested in actually illustrating Arthur's book? Yeah, me. I'm a huge, huge fan of Arthur Machen. Machen? I think it's Machen. Yeah, Machen. I can't pronounce that then in English. I can barely pronounce anything in English. Nobody can. So yeah, I was a, already a big fan. Um, I read uh, The Great God Pan a long time ago. Um, that sort of fiction is the sort of stuff that really changes your life. I remember, for example, the first day I read Lovecraft. Mm -hmm. I was waiting for my mom to come out of some business meeting or something like that. And I was reading Pickman's model. And I remember closing the book and looking out at the world. <laughs> Suddenly everything was so more large and scary <laughs> and different. So I, I get that from, from his fiction. I really love what Arthur Mac, Machen does. And The Great Cotan and Three Imposters are some of my favorite books ever made. Um, I actually read, uh, the thing is that Arthur Machen in the, in sort of, in, in the Spanish editions, they segmented, they took parts of the book and they published it in uh, separate stories in, 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 instead of this coherent whole. So they broke the, the, chi the Chinese book box that Arthur Machen is. And the first story I ever read was Binun Sabati. Uh, which is the novel of the white power, but mm -hmm. they decided to rename it to the Wine of the Sabbath. And that was a huge inspiration for uh, the work that I had in here. And in, in you, would you ever consider? Yeah, I will consider it. <laughs> <laughs> the, I, I feel a little bit like a real imposter in that because if I, if I tell you yes, of course, I cannot give the answer that Sam just gave would because you like to do I, I, in, fact, in fact, I discovered his work because uh, you invited me on that show. So I never read him before, and what I read, I loved it, of course. But so, so uh, I will totally be up for that. But um, I'm just a newborn. With, he's, with he's pleading the fifth, is what he's saying. Um, he's, he's like, he's saying, I'd love to do it, yet. I, I love to be completely legit uh, mm -hmm. when I do something. Right. You want and to I have just, the time, it has to be the right time. And yes, and, uh, but, but, but this is, I mean, the novel is fantastic and I... Um, there is many, many elements that I definitely relate to in the book that uh, connect with my own symbolic system. So I felt uh, very free when we worked on it because there was always one or another element that we could grab uh, and start to I could connect my artwork with the book really easily. So, so yes, the answer is yes. Where would you like to go in, in five years with the work that you're doing um, today? I know that both of you are big proponents of digital art mm -hmm. and digital, digital creation. Uh, it's not going to go away anytime soon. And um, I know you guys aren't going to, even doing fine art, you're not going to just stop making digital art because... That's a, that, that's a good question because I'm considering uh, more and more 
getting away from digital. Really? Uh, I have been, I started with, let, let's be very honest with something. Um, in most of my work, the reason why I used photograph at the beginning of my career was because I was not able to paint as well as I wanted to. I can relate to that. <laughs> and uh, so that started again a long time ago. I, I was uh, I was very uh, able with drawing, and that was really my thing. But as soon as I had to start to deal with colors and values and paint, uh, I was struggling. So just dropping some photographs in the work was making it super easy. And that's when I started to develop those techniques. Uh, but I was frustrated with that and I, uh, I spent those last five years, ten years almost, getting over this uh, frustration by drawing more, painting more, as much as I could, um, and still keep my digital techniques because that's my visual identity as well. But more and more I'm taking a turn that we, I will probably keep working digitally because it's very important for uh, time frames, deadlines. Uh, Commercial work. If, if, you want, if you want to make a, a living out of your art today, you, you must be faster than you cannot wait for oil to dry. Or, mm -hmm. um, I mean, you can try. But. Yes, of course, of course. Uh, but, but, uh, and I know many uh, artists do it mm -hmm. today. Um, but digital is, is really the, the fast way to work efficiently. And, um, but more and more I just want to let that aside, enter a room, sit in front of a canvas and paint. Uh, just for, I don't even care if I show it or not, but I, I'm really, I'm in this kind of crisis right now where I need, I need to paint. Yes. Yeah, yeah I know, I know. And you? When, no, where do you see paint. yourself in, in five years? Where do you want to be in five years? Not there. Not dead? <laughs> yeah. Not in the ground. <laughs> Not on the ground. I want to be in five years. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, well, I can really relate to what Bastian is saying. In fact, I remember, you know, seeing, almost giving up art, and then seeing Dave McKean's work and saying, oh, this is easy. He just photographs. That would be easy. <laughs> of course, I was very wrong. Um, the, the minute I started working with photography and painting, I realized that you must become a good photographer and a good painter as well, otherwise yes. nothing good is going to come of two bad things. I do a lot of uh, practice painting on the side, so I, I don't feel that cure, that or art, urge, <laughs> what's, what's that English word, the urge? The, what would it? Like the, uh, the necessity. Okay. The, <laughs> the urge? The, the, the arch, urge, yeah, the arch, the arch of doing that uh, right now. But I'm really, in, I'm really into you know switching also to traditional media. Again, uh, not because I find digital art bo boring at all. In fact, I, in fact, I still feel quite excited about it. I don't feel like I have mastered anything, but it's an important step to take out of the comfort zone. And I agree with you, it's, uh, yeah. it's uh, painting will make the digital better. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, I, I believe that I, I have still a lot of things to say regarding the use of photography in, in this industry because we, got, we are shoved with this dogmatic idea that this is cheating. That's why I really love the, the mm -hmm. irony in the title of the, of the show, The Three Imposters, where the three of us work with photography. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's uh, something that I... I question that a lot even yeah. with my students because I also teach uh, digital art but the things that I teach them are today uh, yeah. more directed toward traditional techniques. Yes. Um, so because you know one of the things that I have to do is breaking in their mind the idea that photography is going to make things easy uh, and I focus on making them paint and, and, and use photography um, to say simply you should not be used by photography, you should use photography. And that's what is very important, mm -hmm. is to, to use it as a, another possible tool. Um, the danger with a lot of beginners, and even not beginners, uh, digital artists to use photography, is sometimes they will drop a photograph and they will lose control of what they do because yes. they try to stick to what the photograph is giving mm -hmm. them where it should be, photography should just be a material that you can yes. manipulate freely. Right. And that's why it's extremely important to build 
uh, fine art painting skills and drawing skills uh, to to do the right manipulation. Right, or even yeah. just observational skills. Mm -hmm. Yes, completely. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think you are attracted to the darker elements of art? Bastion. <laughs> Um, I do not explain it. Uh, that will sound very cliché, but uh, this is what comes from me if you make me sit down with a pencil and a piece of paper. And that I, I do not have uh, a tragic story. I, I am not. I was not an unhappy child. I am not a depressive person. Quite the opposite. Um, and maybe it is because all the things goes through my heart. I guess. Uh, not my heart, my heart. I have no... You no. have no heart. Yeah, so... Uh, that's it, I have no explanation. So, uh, it was always for the cool factor, but for me it was very important, you know, to delve deeper into that and try to articulate why I like the darker stuff. And the answer that I came with was essentially that we... It's some sort of rebellion to well, to towards what's established as beautiful. That um, let me think this. A bit. <laughs> that essentially we are told that you should do these things in life, and if you do any any of the other things, you're wrong, right? Um, wow. Yeah, <laughs> and to me it was like a, a bit of an, of an exploration of my rebellious side. It's a way to delve into the darkness to emerge with a new kind of beauty. And that kind of beauty is quite the opposite of this idea of beauty that a world that claims to have science and reasons and reason yet acts like he has none of that is imposing into you. And that little act of rebellion actually serves to enrich the the world and to change change it a bit. So I, I like what you said about the idea of tragedy because what I was exploring with this series was the idea of loss also. Like no nothing prepares you for losing something or someone in life, right? You were you're born and at some point you even lose the sight of what who you are or what you want, right? And how that idea of loss, how surviving that loss, how overcoming that loss ends up in uh, a very important change and a new kind, again, uh, there's a beauty in that. It's uh, a beauty that we cannot see it because we are blinded by this idea of pain and loss at the time, right? The emotions we connect with, the, with, with losing something or someone. And I, wa I wanted to uh, reach out and try to channel a bit of that in the world. Mm -hmm. We have one more question from, uh, from Natalia, a beautiful bazaar magazine. Yeah. By the way, thank you so much, Natalia. You've been awesome sending us these questions and just being an awesome person in mm -hmm. general. Uh, her question is, if your artwork was a dessert, what would it be? Chocolate cake. Chocolate cake? Mm -hmm. What kind of chocolate? Um, the darkest. Darkest chocolate. <laughs> okay. All right. It will be bitter. Would it be bittersweet? bittersweet. I'm okay with bittersweet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How about you? Uh, duck. Is that a dessert? <laughs> no. Uh, I don't know anyone who eats gooey duck for dessert. Oh right? man. So your dessert will not be an actual dessert. No, it no, will. It's no, phallic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that I'm not. Really, I'm not much of a sweets guy. But if your artwork was a dessert. In my artwork, but a dessert probably would be um, blood pudding. Blood pudding probably will <laughs> blood sausage. No, that's not a dessert. Again, just put some sugar on it, maybe. Uh, well, <sighs> my artwork is not a dessert. <laughs> yeah, my artwork. Does this have it's to be main, this hard? It's the main card. No, 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 no. My artwork will be um, what's the English word for that fruit? Ah, strawberry milkshake. It'll be a milkshake? Yeah, it will be a milkshake. Why would it be strawberry? Because strawberry is my favorite flavor of milkshake. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you again for watching our art talk, and uh, or artist chat, I might say. Oh, okay. Uh, we, we do have an art talk with both of these two, um, which will be at the opening uh, October 11th.
from 7.30 to probably 7.30 till 8 uh, is mm -hmm. their talk. Again, um, these, these, uh, this is Sam Mariah, Bastian Lacouf de Harm, and then we also have Marcella Boulevard, who is not here. We, we miss her, though. Um, for the Three Imposters show, which opens the 11th, ends on November 7th, definitely come visit us or see us online. Thanks again. I'm Julie Barrow. Peace out. There is an abyss of being that man has never fathomed.